This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Heather Vickery about fostering a culture of gratitude in the workplace. Heather Vickery, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have this conversation. And we're going to be focusing on a topic that is near and dear to my heart and one that I know you focus a lot of your time and energy on, and that is fostering gratitude. And I want us to focus specifically on fostering a culture of gratitude within the workplace, uh, because I, I think among all the many things leaders can do to try to effectively lead their people one thing that it's super uh, straightforward and easy, but often gets overlooked is just being genuinely um, showing genuine gratitude to your people Mm -hmm. and creating an environment where they can show gratitude to each other. And it's just so uplifting when we can do that. Um, Yet we often kind of end up uh, (laughs) devolving into fear tactics and pressure yeah. tactics and micromanaging and like all these things that leaders end up doing instead, even though they do appreciate their people and they do um, have things that they could share uh, in, in terms of genuine um, gratitude and, and that positive feedback that would help people improve their performance. Uh, so I think as, as we um, dive on into the conversation, we'll be able to explore that more together. I did want to share Heather's bio with everybody. Heather Heather Vickery is an award-winning business owner and global leader with over 20 years as an entrepreneur. She leverages her entrepreneurial skills and expertise to coach individuals towards greater personal and professional fulfillment by helping them leverage their fear into intentional bravery. Heather says, when we choose bravely on purpose, we choose bigger, have bigger successes, and it's contagious. A celebrated public speaker, Heather inspires audiences and empowers attendees with the tools they need to live bold and successful lives through creating balance, time management, mindfulness, as well as countless systems, strategies, and boundaries. Heather is a single mom of four girls who left a decade-long marriage and came out personally and professionally. She's the author of Gratitude Journal, Shift Your Focus and Grow Gratitude, a gratitude journal for kids and families. Heather is also the host and executive producer of the Brave Files podcast. Heather, uh, you do so many really cool things. It's a pleasure (laughs) to have you. Uh, Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of background and personal context before we launch in? Yeah. So just for point of reference, um, I am certified in positive psychology and at the root of positive psychology really is gratitude. And so while it used to be something that folks thought, boy, that's nice. uh, Now we know it's not just nice. It is nice. It's not just nice. Uh, It's science. And when we practice gratitude for ourselves, so there's a, there are two different parts. When you practice gratitude, um, for yourself and then also share that outwardly. So there's a difference between feeling grateful and expressing gratitude. What happens is you stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, which decreases stress, anxiety, and depression. It it increases overall happiness and joy. And of course, it seems so simple and it seems so silly. So just to add to to the bio is I've done a lot of work to figure out how a lot of these things that folks kind of want to call soft skills, have some real powerful science behind them. And um, 
and they work and they work in the workplace and they change the game, which is so wonderful because business as usual is not business as usual anymore. And if you are stuck trying to do things the way the old guard did them, you're going to get left behind and it's going to hurt in the process. So we can avoid that bonus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely a bonus. Uh, avoiding, um, there, there's plenty of stuff that leaders have to deal with. Um, there's always these pressures and, and the weight and the heavy you know burden you, you bear on your shoulders, just going the day-to-day and trying to keep things moving forward productively. And why not do something relatively simple that can just enhance the environment and the, the, the um, existence of everybody (laughs) on your team. It'll help you as an individual. It'll help your team. Yeah. So, so let's talk more about you, you, you started to get into the positive psychology elements. What are, and, and you started to list a few of those things. Let's talk more specifically about how showing gratitude Um, benefits the giver of the gratitude as well as how it really benefits um, the receiver. Yeah, I, I will say before I can get into that, I think that we really have to start internally. If your motivation is to express gratitude, let me start over. Um, Gratitude has to come from the inside. You have to be able to feel it and understand it and know that it has a powerful impact uh people want to skip the part where it's about them they want to get right to um you know being a better leader or growing your team or making other people feel good and we want you to do that but that really should be built on a foundation of doing that for yourself and as inspired leaders as thoughtful leaders uh, the best way you can do that is by leading by example and uh urge everyone to have even a, a very minimalistic personal gratitude practice where once a day they list three to five things they're grateful for and why because um, when you can understand the why you can replicate that behavior then you will automatically start expressing it outwards because it feels so good and you'll go oh um, I had this great podcast interview with with Jonathan and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk about something that is so important to me and then I go, Jonathan, thank you. I'm so grateful for this experience. And then you feel good. And then we move forward in that um, sort of loving, grateful way. So we will talk about that. And it's really important. But I just want everyone to know that you can't skip over the part where you do this for yourself. If yeah. you do that, it won't work. Yeah, well, that, that, that's a very <laughs> good point. And I, I had a recent discussion with another um professional like yourself. And we were talking about the role of self-leadership and how important it is to do that self-work first. Um, you know, not, not that you have to wait to like completely arrive. No, they can be congruent for sure. It it can be congruent and happen simultaneously, but you do need to, to spend that time and focus on what's happening within yourself. (laughs) If you want it to come across as authentic and genuine with the people that you're trying to lead and serve. Absolutely. And I, the, the higher up the executive chain that I work with as a coach, um, I find it harder. You know, I'll say to people, we end almost all of our coaching sessions with, okay, okay, list 10 things you're grateful for and why. And you would think that I'd ask these people to, to do some sort of advanced calculus and they, oh, I can't. And I said, listen, if you can't come up with 10 things you're grateful for, We've got bigger problems than what you walked in the room to talk about. And, and, but until you can know that you can really be grateful for the fact that the sun is shining and it feels nice or your desk chair is comfortable, or then you get into bigger things, you know, that it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. But once you get good with that and you practice it, and that my favorite thing about the science behind this is y'all don't even have to believe me. You just have to do it because it will work because it's science, because it will neurologically rewire your brain. You will stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system, decrease stress, anxiety, and depression, and it'll just happen whether you think it's the, it's the truth or not the truth. And so then here's what happens when, and, and that was actually an 11 year old girl that sent me down this training, this course of study for myself. I had written Shift Your Focus, which was a gratitude journal for professional adults. And I had so many parents asking me to do something for kids and families. So I wrote 
grow grateful. And I did a lot of research and I have quotes in both books. I have entrepreneurial quotes in the adult book and I have kids quotes in the kids and family book. And um, one darling, brilliant 11 year old said, but, but mom, cause I, I did it through their parents. I think that there's a difference in feeling grateful and expressing gratitude. Well, of course she's right. Um, and we don't always think about that. And so what happens when we express gratitude outwardly towards others is we shift the energy in the space and we shift the energy in our connection and communication because all of a sudden somebody on the other end feels seen and heard and valued. And we know that people work much, much harder for someone that sees them, hears them and values them, right? So all of a sudden you are are building a culture of people who are committed to showing up in the best version of themselves and working really hard to be part of a healthy, successful, thriving team because they matter in the team. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. When you say to your team members, um, okay, this is the situation we're dealing with. Let's talk together about how we can move through the next phase or we can problem solve this or let's look at what didn't work and how can we make that different? And then when you say, oh, that's a great idea, thank you. Or you give people credit for what they've done, the conversations, what they've brought to the table. Everything shifts. And when you do it for yourself and people can see it, they will model that behavior. But also that's really really great way to show up as an inspired leader and build leadership from the ground floor up in your company because they see you behaving that way and they start to think that's how they should lead a team instead of, you know, dictator like demanding that people do it exactly the way you want to do it, all of that. So when you ask employees um, their thought and their opinion, when you, you thank them for it, especially if, if you've been touched or moved or something's been made better for you, And they maybe don't know it to say, I don't even know if you know this, but when you said that it, it lit off a chain of ideas and now I'm doing this, but it came from that idea that you had. Um, It's just really impactful. One of my favorite new books is uh, the Wolfpack by Abby Wambach, which is 98 pages of fabulous. And one of the the chapters talks about um, a success, a, a success is a team success. She said, if you've ever seen me get a goal, you watch me on TV, I'm pointing to everybody else on my team because I couldn't have made a goal if somebody hadn't passed the ball to me or if you know, this person hadn't trained me or this person hadn't cheered me on. And that's really what gratitude is about. It's about building that community effort and um, making people feel loved and valued and seen and heard. Yeah, well, I, I love that. Loved, valued, seen, and heard. Uh, that, that sums it up really, really well, doesn't it? Um, and it's amazing how often people go about their day without feeling those things. And yeah. it's very, very sad to me. Yeah. <clears throat> I was talking with another um, 
uh, another professional uh, a few weeks ago, and we were talking about um, the state of just general uh, loneliness mm. in the world, loneliness, loneliness in the workplace. And there was a recent study, and this blew me away, um, that one in five millennials say they don't have a friend, like a single friend, mm. um, not even a good friend, like uh, any friend. Um, and that, I mean, that is heartbreaking to me that that yeah. people would go through life without having that personal connection. We are social animals. We need Absolutely. Um, we need people to be able to thrive. Even if you're introverted, you still need your core group, right? Of people. Absolutely. I call it a personal and, board of directors and everybody should have one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, when I think about this and I, I, I think how heartbreaking that is, one of the most simple things that we can do as leaders is to create a, a psychologically safe place amongst our people in our team. They don't need to be best friends with each other, but they should be able to feel like it's a safe place where they can be their authentic self Absolutely. and that people genuinely care about them and that people appreciate them. They're loved, they're valued, they're appreciated. They have an opportunity to contribute in meaningful ways. Yeah. And oh my goodness, the, the impact that that can have for that individual is going to be huge, not to mention the impact it's going to have for your team and you're just going to be way more productive and, yeah. and create cooler stuff. Yeah. I have an entire corporate program that I teach that's called the empowerment program where it there it's, it's uh, authentic leadership from the ground floor up, but it's based on um, showing up authentically and vulnerably in the workplace, asking for what you want, setting boundaries. But it's all about, um, you know, there are no safe places. There are only safe people. And when you show up authentically and vulnerably, you present yourself as a safe person and people then feel like they're part of something bigger. And the fact of the matter is when we do that, not only do we have happier, healthier coworkers and employees, they stay longer. Retention is, is better. Their customer service skills are better. We all make more money. Like all of these things are a result of um, abundance leadership instead of fear-based leadership. You know, we don't, don't come from a place of scarcity, come from a place of possibility. One of my favorite things to have any client, but particularly executives, do what their team is to say, what is possible if today? And that really can stem beautifully from gratitude because you start to imagine more possibility. Um, the more you see it, the more you have of it to see. Yeah, and and it really does start to to grow exponentially. It starts to build upon itself and you start to notice things that previously... Uh, you just didn't even notice. You just would walk through your day, yeah. And, and you know, you you bear the weight of of your day and the messiness and the complexities of life, and and just how stuff can wear you down. And it's just so freeing to <laughs> to be able to start to notice all these these beautiful moments and and the the simple little um, pleasures that can come into life as we're able to like sit with ourselves and to notice those things. It, it really is freeing. That's a, it's a perfect word choice. I urge people, if you have team meetings, uh, to start off your team meetings with a, a conversation about wins and gratitude. Before you get into any of the meat of any of the work stuff, have them go around the room and say, please share a win and something you're grateful for. And it will shift the energy and the focus of your entire meeting, and you will walk out with happier, more energetic people with better ideas, uh, ready to go after things. It, don't wait until the, a lot of people will do it at the end, but really I urge you to do it at the beginning because that creates the energy that you want for a successful meeting. Yeah, well, I, I love that. Um, I, I noticed we're getting close to the end of our time together, uh, but I, I thought maybe in, in addition to that tip, that's a, a fantastic tip. Uh, any other like one or two things that you would suggest to anyone listening today, like that you can go and just start doing immediately that can start to have an impact? Yeah, um, there are a couple things that I, I find really, first of all, start a gratitude practice in any way that you want. You can grab my journal, you can use a blank journal, you can keep it on your phone, there are apps. The key is that it must be written down. Uh, there's something that happens. It can't just be in your mind because there's something that transpires physiologically when it comes out of us and tap into why. 
So I'm grateful for this because of X so that, um, you know, I always say, I always, always use, I'm grateful for the stream of sunshine in my office as an example, because I feel like I'm a plant. And when I sit in that sun, I'll, I, I feel like I've, I'm growing. I can literally feel myself growing, which is such a silly example, but it, it just shows you that you can literally be grateful for anything. Cap your gratitude in positive. I have a, I have a client once who um, we were doing the gratitude at the end of her session. And she said, well, I'm, I'm grateful that the plane I was on yesterday didn't crash. And I'm grateful that my plants weren't dead. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on a second. Like, how, doesn't that feel so heavy to be grateful in the negative? How would it feel to say, I'm grateful that my flight was safe. I'm grateful that my plants are alive. So think about your word choice. Word choice really, really, really matters. But the other thing that people don't think of is, is gratitude is a really great way to get unstuck, to shake things up. If you find yourself feeling frustrated or angry uh, or banging your head against the wall, stop what you're doing. Take a couple steps back, take a couple deep breaths, and then look around you and say out loud five things that you're grateful for that you can see, touch, taste, smell, hear, feel, anything, could be anything. And then take a couple more deep breaths and then go back to it. And you will see that your perspective on it shifts. You can find gratitude at any time in any way, and it will, it will shift your focus. That's why I named my book that. So try those things. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Heather, it has been a real uh, pleasure having you on the show today. Before we close, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, and uh, then just give us the final word. Absolutely. So I'm super easy to find. Uh, My website is vickeryandco.com. I'm on all of the social media platforms at Vickery and Co. And if you're curious to be um, part of a, a collective of people who are um, sort of looking to lean into their brave. I have the Facebook um, collective, which is called the Brave on Purpose Collective. Just search it up, come hang out with us. It's free. We do uh, a lot of positive leadership and things like that. And I have, I'm not sure when this episode is going to air, but in July, I'm going to do a workshop where I teach my Brave Method, which is my coaching platform to lead a more successful healthier life and business. And I'd love to get you on the the waiting list to come and join us for this workshop. Perfect. Thank you, Heather. It has been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about her books, her work, get uh, involved with the workshop, uh, check out her podcast. Uh, She's doing so many really great creative things. (laughs) And uh, as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.